Although the Imperial War Museum failed to identify the location of this film, and it was given what is termed an allocated title, Film of Life Aboard an LST, in brackets crossing the channel, anybody who has embarked for the Isle of Wight from Southampton will recognise the location as the present-day Red Funnel Terminal. On the shoreline, the tall white building with pillars in the centre is the Royal Southern Yacht Club, and on the right is the medieval wool house, which today is the site of an independent brewery. Between the two buildings is Bugle Street, leading to Southampton's Tudor House Museum, and in the background is the spire of St Michael's Church, the oldest building in Southampton. As the LST or landing ship tank, affectionately described also as a large, slow target, moves away from the berth, just out of sight on the left is the Royal Pier, sadly destroyed by fire, but today it is still possible to see the wooden dolphins in the water used to guide landing craft ashore at what was designated during D-Day as Embarkation Hard S2. As the LST turns seawards, the film pans along the Southampton Town Quay, Today all the cranes have gone and it is made up of offices and coffee shops with a plaque that reads D-Day 1944-1994 in commemoration of the men and women of the city whose work in Southampton docks and elsewhere made possible the invasion of Europe. Below that plaque is another that reads the 5th of June D-Day 1944-1994 in warehouses that stood on this quay lived some of the men of combined operations whose ceaseless efforts made possible the embarkation of millions of men and thousands of tons of stores for the invasion of Europe. Some may be surprised to see that although the passengers appear to be mainly British, the LST has a US Navy crew and skipper. Yet this idea represents a misconception regarding the separation of Allied forces. Southampton was the springboard for Operation Overlord with the US Army headquarters, Buco, or the build-up, and control organisation based in a wing of the Civic Centre and the British headquarters in the South Western Hotel, which was codenamed HMS Shrapnel. In fact, cooperation between the Allies was essential for the success of D-Day and both groups were in daily contact sharing both men and resources. Another misconception is that the headquarters for D-Day was at Southwark House, many miles inland. However, in his report, Admiral Ramsey makes the point that from the outset of detailed planning for Operation Neptune, it was clear that the success would be largely dependent upon the ability to exercise close and continuous control of the thousands of ships and craft taking part. A reflection of the rapport between Allied forces can be seen on the decks of the LST as it heads to the Normandy coast, with an American serviceman who is at first glance seems to be demonstrating unarmed combat, but is in fact showing a British soldier the latest dance craze to the bemusement of an onlooker. A plaque on the Civic Centre, the name of Southampton's Town Hall, records that it was used as a headquarters by the 14th Major Port US Army during World War II, and that between D-Day June the 6th and the end of hostilities, orders were issued directing the embarkation of the American armies, who together with our allies sailed from Southampton docks to liberate Europe. During the operation, over two and a quarter million troops, a quarter of a million vehicles and a millions of tons of supplies of the US Army were shipped through this port. Although there is no date on the film, the Solent is still crowded with Liberty ships and landing crafts, suggesting that the crossing is taking place around the time of D-Day. There is also a LCT following the vessel possibly as an aid to navigation or for protection. Unfortunately, there are no identifying features in the film, so there is no way of knowing the fate of the LST passengers or crew. But they too can be remembered together with the millions that made the same journey and are mentioned in the memorials.